push that rock here with some, some math, we're gonna take the root of a complex number using something called the circle chop theorem. And we're gonna try to understand why the circle chop theorem works the way it does. So 16 is a real number, but that makes it a complex number. Remember, every real number is a complex number. So here I have, uh, let's see if I can get it in view. I have 16 plotted on the real axis. So it has a modulus of 16 and a direction of zero. So I can write it as 16 times cos of zero plus i times sine of zero in the polar form. Or if we abbreviate that, just 16 CIS of zero degrees. And what we wanna do is take the fourth root of it, meaning we were raising it to the fractional power one fourth, or we're taking the fourth root. So here it is, the fourth root of it in standard form, the fourth root of it in trigonometric form, or the fractional power one fourth. How do you do that? Well, you find the number that multiplied by itself four times gives you 16. And remember, we multiply the moduli and add the arguments. So we're multiplying the modulus four times, but adding the argument four times. One obvious answer is two, because two is right here on a Cartesian plane. It would have a direction of zero as well, and zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is still zero, and two dum two dum two dum two is 16. What about negative two? Negative two times itself four times will be positive 16, but its direction is one eight, 180 degrees. So this is negative 2 cis 180 degrees. But what happens when you multiply 180 by 4? Or you add up, because you're supposed to add the arguments, add the argument 180 four times. Well, you get 180, 360, and then you double it again for another 360. Four of them makes 720. 720 degrees is back over here at zero. So that too gives you 16 cis of zero degrees. So negative two is also a root of 16. How about two i? There's two i right there. Zero plus two i, or two cis of 90. Yes, if I add up 90 four times, of course I get 360, which is coterminal with zero. How about negative two i? That would be right here, zero minus two i. That would be two cis of negative 90 degrees, because we could think of the direction as that angle there. And negative 90 added up four times is negative 360 degrees, which is also coterminal with the direction of our number we're trying to take the root of. So those are the four roots of 16. Zero plus two i, zero minus two i, negative two plus zero i, and two plus zero i. And notice they chop up a circle into four equal sectors. So that we call the circle chop theorem. So let's state the circle chop theorem. Let me switch slides. So I have it right here. Let's open this one up. Here it is. So to find the roots of a complex number, what you do is you are going to chop up a circle whose radius is the, real, is the root of the modulus. So if you're trying to find the nth root, you just take the nth root of the modulus, that's gonna be the radius of the circle. So a while ago, we were trying to take the fourth root of 16, the fourth root of the real number 16 is two, so our radius was two. Then you're gonna divide it into n equal sectors. If you're taking the nth root, you divide it into n equal sectors, and the original or principal root, the initial chop, is gonna happen at the argument divided by n. So a while ago, we were doing 16, whose direction was zero. Zero divided by four was zero. That's why the first chop was at zero. Let's do it with a more complicated example. So I'm gonna switch slides again, and I have a prepared slide here somewhere. Here it is, example of the circle chop. So we're going to do this example of the circle chop here. We're gonna take the third root of 27 cis 30 degrees. So the modulus is 27, and the direction or argument is 30 degrees. And we wanna chop this, find the three roots, which is gonna chop up a circle with a certain size radius. Now, so what we're doing is we're trying to find the third root of this complex number right here, which remember is equivalent to finding this number raised to the one third power. 
Now the way you do that is you find the radius of the circle first, which the radius of the circle that you're gonna chop up is going to be this root, the third root of this, which is three, because three times three times three is 27. So I'm gonna go get a circle whose radius is three. Let's do that. I got one ready, to, already drawn here. So here we have a circle whose radius is three. This is our real axis, our imaginary axis. And we're gonna chop this into three equal sectors. And to find the principal root, we take the argument and divide it by the root that we're taking. So theta over n. And in this case, n is three and theta is 30 degrees. Remember, we're taking the root of this guy who's got 30 degrees. So 30 divided by three is 10 degrees. Oh yeah, 10 degrees plus 10 degrees plus 10 degrees gets us back to 30 degrees. So our first chop, is right there. That's our first one, right there. We need two more. Now to find the rest, you just take 360 and divide it by three. Let's see, what's 360 divided by three? 120. So the next chop will be 120 degrees later. Add 120 to this 10. That gives you 130. So 130, 100. See, 120 would be about here, so 130 degrees about right there. So it's three cis of 130 degrees. Why is that working? Well, 130 plus 130 is 260. Add another 130 in, and you've got 390. 390 is one full rotation, 360 degrees plus 30 more. Gets us back to our original uh, uh, number that had a direction of 30 degrees. Now, to find the last chop, you just add 120 to this 130. So that gives us 250. So that's gonna be down here somewhere. So that's three cis of 250 degrees. Does that work? Well, yes, 250 added to itself three times is 720. I mean, sorry, is 750. Ah, uh, what's going on? 750. But 750 is simply 720, which is two full rotations plus 30. So that's the third number or the third direction that you can add up three times and land at our original guy, which was 30 degrees, which would be about right there. Our original guy was in this, he was longer. He was 27, he was very much longer. He had a modulus of 27, but he was in the 30 degree mark. And to find his root, we had to find numbers that we multiply three times to get that big. <clears throat> and we had to find directions that we add three times to get this direction of 30. So 10 plus 10 plus 10 gives us 30. 130 plus 130 plus 130 gives us 390, which is 360 plus 30. And then 250 plus 250 plus 250 gives us 750, which is two rotations plus 30. Now there are a lot of other numbers, but they'll all be coterminal with these three. So those are the three roots that we were looking for. So the answer to our question, if I can get it back over here, the answer to our question, what are these roots? They are, three cis of 10 degrees, three cis of 130 degrees, and three cis of 250 degrees. And those are the three roots of 27 cis 30 degrees. Math made simple. It's Simpson Math.